Thank you, Todd. I still haven't figured out what a do is. And if I get it, it's going to be a lot of it. A lot of a do. So, I spent a lot of time in New York. And, you know, when you're there, sometimes you meet girls. So I met this girl. And I thought it was getting along great, you know. We, we were talking all the time, emailing every hour or two. And then, even though we'd only known each other for a week or two, I, I, I really thought we had something going, something special. And then we had a first date at the MoMA, and then I didn't hear from her for a couple hours. So I thought, maybe something's wrong. So I said, hey, what's wrong? And this is a very New York thing. She so said, I want to move to the Upper West Side by Central Park, have a baby, quit my job, get married within a year, which is why I can't date artists anymore. I was pretty upset about this, so I told my friend, and he said, hey, that's great. She said you were an artist. And I don't know if you can hear me right now, but I kind of feel like an artist in here in this, uh, this incredible gallery. It's, uh, it's a big honor to, uh, to be here tonight with all of you guys. There was an opening joke before you were talking, but that's okay. I love all of you. Um, well, I hope you're not waiting on a Superman, though, because the Daily Planet's closed. They don't pay writers anymore. So that's, that's why I had to do this material myself. So. You're all right. You're all right. There you go. Keep it I needed that lady in the back. I needed that. So, like a lot of you who are from New York, I'm not really from New York, I wasn't born there, but 10 years ago I moved to New York and I said, Dad, I'm going to move to New York, I'm going to be an actor, and he said, hold on, are you trying to be a homosexual? And I, and I was thinking, Dad, come on, really? I haven't had a girlfriend in like nine years at the time. Maybe, maybe you should worry about me becoming a heterosexual first, Dad. I mean, one step at a time, it's a slippery slope, you know? So. Plus, I have Crohn's disease, you know, that stomach thing, I don't know if you guys know about that. Anyway, it's bad, so Crohn's disease, and I never know when to bring that up on the first date. I mean, when is a good time to let a girl know that you could just drop dead at any moment? When is a good time? They just don't prepare you for this in high school. They just don't. So, it started, a, you know, a few years ago, the whole, you know, Crohn's disease thing, and they, uh, they rushed me to a hospital, carved out my insides, it looked like the Grand Canyon. And, uh, and after that, they uh, attached a plastic bag full of collecting all my fecal matter right here. Yeah, it was right here. I'll, uh, I'll show you later for a quarter. Uh, and I, I do take pictures. Uh, so, so I was in the hospital for a few weeks, and I, I learned a couple very important life lessons. Uh, number one, phantom limbs are the best way to cop a feel without getting in trouble. So uh, if that ever happens to anybody, you know, that, you, you learned it from me. Uh, number two, it is physically impossible, and this is true, to masturbate with a tube down your penis. So, that, that's for the guys in the room. That's a tip for you. Uh, so, so I had a plastic bag full of poop, you know, for, for six months. And I can offer some sage advice for anyone who might find themselves in a similar circumstance. Is your stomach feeling okay now? Might be time to get checked out. So. Make sure you get the plastic bag that snaps, you know? You don't want to be, you don't want one with Velcro. You don't want to be the guy in line at the grocery store who has to run home and change his pants because, all right, well, I, I think you get the picture on that one. You don't want to be that guy. Just believe me, because I was that guy. I don't know if you got where I was going with that, so. You don't want to be that guy. So, anyway, six months later, they finally reversed the surgery, and, uh, hold on. Uh, Yeah, right there, look at that, it's a big scar. So, I'm a real boy again, you know, like Pinocchio. Yeah, I'm a real boy, so. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. Well, but at least, now I don't have to worry about getting kidnapped. You know, we always hear those stories of people getting kidnapped, they wake up and they're, uh, a shower full of ice, something like that. No one's going to kidnap me because if they do, they're going to take one look at that and say, Somebody needs to it. Somebody. I don't know. 
but it does make it really easy to pick out a Halloween costume. I went, uh, for, this is true, for Halloween this year, I went as the same thing I go as every year. Someone trying not to die. Feels like I'm dying out here, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, so, naturally, the subject comes up a lot, you know, in, in conversation. You know, hey, how have you been the last few years? Oh, well, I almost died, and, you know, Crohn's disease, and then, and then whenever they hear that, whenever they hear about this terrible disease that almost cost me my life twice and caused me a great deal of pain, they always say the same thing. But you're better now, right? You know, like it's a cold, but you're better now, right? So, Crohn's disease, it brings new meaning to the term. No one wants to hear about your shit. Nobody. You guys are listening, that's great, you're a great audience. Uh, so now, now I have to go to the bathroom a lot, and sometimes it hurts when I eat too much food, but I have a feeling that's probably what it's like being a middle school cafeteria worker, you know? I, I heard the food's not too good, that's, that's where I was going with that joke, so. But really, like everything else in life, you know, diet is really what, you know, can slow down or eliminate this disease altogether. I was on a detox diet so strict this year that the only thing I could eat was guilt, okay? That's it, just guilt. But, and that reminds me of a limerick, strangely enough. There once was a man from France. He liked to eat croissants. But unfortunately, he couldn't hold up his pants, you know, because he was a laissez-faire kind of guy. That's hands off in French. Okay. There you go. Hands off guy. But, so one of, the, one of the positive aspects of having a disease, this is, this is true ladies, one of the positive aspects of having a disease, is it really gives you a lot of empathy for other people, you know, what they're going through. So, in Manhattan, there's this poster I used to see all the time. It was a bald kid, bald kid with one leg, standing like this. And the caption below it read, through cancer a curveball. Now, whenever I would see that, I would always think, maybe you should have thrown cancer like a fast pitch or something. You know, that way, cancer wouldn't have gone and hit the ball back and blown his leg off. Well, that's what I think. You've got to watch out for cancer. So, remember all those people in high school who said, be yourself, don't change. Yes. Yeah, well, some of them did change. They're dead now. So maybe they should have taken their own advice. Think about that. And for the ones who are alive, well, a lot of them are jealous about other people's success, you know. Nobody likes it when a friend more successful than you. It's true, and I'm a comic, an actor, and a writer, and I can relate to this. And i got one way to solve it. I'm not going to talk to anybody. That's it. Nobody. I'm not talking to anybody. Another one of my favorite diseases is meningitis. And I, I think if I was a conservative Republican, and I found out what this jitis is that those men are into, I would be really, really disturbed. You know? I just don't want to know. And speaking of Republicans, you guys have heard, we had a new president, it's okay. Uh, he's causing quite the conniption, and some people are worried about it, you know, but other people are saying, no, no, calm down, there's going to be some great art in this church, look at this great art around here, but this is the way I know it's true. I'm, I'm pretty sure one of his next acts is going to be the green light, that male Ghostbusters reboot that everybody was talking about. Huh? Who's for that, ladies? Well, the men... Okay, there's a... I'll explain it to you later. There's a Ghostbusters female movie, and then they want to have a male go anyway. All right, well, if you, didn't get the, if you didn't get the reference, it's hard to follow that joke. That's okay. The point is, Bill Murray would make a cameo in it, Young and Ernie Hudson, and the ladies get to see Channing Tatum with his shirt off. Really, everybody wins. So, he is causing a lot of confusion. I really think he's lowering the national intelligence to the level that they'll have to change the name of the show to Are You Smarter Than a Third Grader? Smarter Than a Third Grader. So, another thing people are really upset about Trump is, is targeting Muslims. They say he's targeting Muslims. Well, you know, he wants to give a Muslim registry, but I think, well, I've got the solution for that. Let's just give him identifying tattoos on the wrists, and then herd them into a designated area that would just solve the whole problem. We clean slate. So, yeah. But anyway, so that's a lot of change. You know, that's a lot of changes. So, I, I mean, that's why they voted for him, you know. But 
I think if they wanted more change, why did they vote for Godfather's Pizza CEO Herman Cain 40 years ago? He would have guaranteed your voice be heard in 30 minutes or less, or your country's free. Yeah. Well, a couple years ago I had this job teaching seniors how to use an iPad. To use an iPad, you have to swipe to unlock it. So I'd say, just swipe to unlock it. And they'd look at me, look at the iPad, look at me, look at... Anyway, there's a lot of looking back at me. So they'd look at that, and then they'd go, what do I do? They were Jewish often, so... Uh, retirement home for now. So I'd say, have you tried touching it yet? Have you tried touching it? So... Anyway, you got to give it to Donald Trump. He did win, and uh, nobody thought he was going to win. I didn't think he was going to win. Did you think he was going to win? No, nobody did. And he proved... You did, okay. Okay, well, there's always, you were right. But unfortunately, a lot of us, a lot of us were proved wrong. And that just goes to show you, that just goes to show you, you should never try to predict who's gonna be a runner-up because it leaves you open to second guessing, okay? That's right, second guessing. So, anyone ever say batter up when you're making pancakes in the morning? Batter up? Maybe you should. I don't know. You ever hear that phrase, good to go, and then you wonder why no one is going? Good to go. No one goes. I don't understand. Good to go. Well, I am single, but I would really love to have kids. It is not for the reasons you think, just to teach them all my weird habits, you know, but I really just want to deny them all forms of handheld digital entertainment. That's all, you know? Maybe that is one of my weird habits. I'm also a Christian, and uh, an issue that comes up a lot in the church is, you know, how to deal with gays. So, major question. How soon after you in invite a homosexual to church should you tell them they're going to hell? I'm just asking for a friend. That's it. Just, just want to know. Asking for a friend. It's got to be tough to come out, you know, to your parents. So, I was thinking, maybe you should try to slip it in to, like, you know, something normal. Like, hey, mom, I'm gay. Also... Could you get a quart of milk for me on the way out to the store? I need more cocoa puffs. But I don't know why Christians are so upset about gay marriage, you know? They have to go to a church. Think about it, Christians. They're in a church. They're subject to being tricked into being saved. Think about it. You know, do you, Ron, take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? And do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes? See, how can you say no to them? How can you say no to them? So, I've been thinking about starting a crowdfunding campaign for a new cereal. It's going to be a kid tested and mother approved. It's going to be a Kickstarter. Yeah, that was a technology joke. I, I realized too late that was never going to fly. But another great thing about the internet is if you haven't seen someone in a long time, this is the number one rule for getting something out of them that you want. Make sure you say, How's it going first? Here's how it goes something like this Hey, Josh, how's it going? They don't wait for a response, they, and then after that they say, how would you like to get on the ground floor of this incredible business opportunity? I'm trying to put two and two together. Meanwhile, I'm like, thanks so much, my former substitute teacher from the Bronx. I mean, I guess I would, absolutely, but the thing about the Bronx is, it's really, you know, it's a, it's really a small community. I feel like, you know, when I, when I go there and break down in the middle of the night and you know, run away scared from people trying to rob my car. I think, hey, do you know my friend Jackie? Well, anyway, a lot of people in here are following their dreams. A lot of young kids following their dreams. So I just want to say for everybody doing that, make sure you bring a really tall ladder if you're going to reach for the stars, okay? That's my set, you guys. Thanks so much. I'm Joshua Dudley. Look for me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everything. I read for the New York Observer. I love you guys. I'm available for photos afterwards. You can look at my scar. All right. It's been fun. Where's our host? Any idea? He's back there. I'll get him. All right.